Gemini CLI is here and it's going to compete with OpenAI's CLI and Claude's CLI. So this is an open source AI agent that is completely free to use right now. It's brought by Google Gemini and this is a big step. Let me explain why. Let me show you how to set it up and use it. This is a beginner friendly tutorial. We're going to go end to end to set everything up. One of the best things is that this is actually integrated with Gemini Code Assist. So this is a big deal. They've got two functionalities that together will be working. If you don't know what Gemini Code Assist is, I will make sure to give you a video down below to see how to use Gemini Code Assist and what it can do. But very quickly, Gemini Code Assist is just a chat plugin that allows you to use Google Gemini's models completely for free inside editors and it's pretty much like cursor, like windsurf and GitHub Copilot. So they've got amazing usage limits. They give you 60 requests per minute, 1000 requests per day, completely for free. Some of them will be done through the best model, which is Gemini 2.5 Pro, one of the best coding models. And if there are limits into how many people are using it, you may be using Gemini 2.5 Plus which is very, very good as well and a lot faster and cheaper, at least for Google. So this is a command line editor, meaning you will run it on your terminal. Now, the setup is super simple. Just stick around to see exactly how to set it up. But about its features, it can use Google search, which is nice. Also, you can use model context protocol servers to use other tools within the CLI and within the Gemini model. You can also create custom instructions and prompt to improve the performance of Gemini. And you can also use it to create automated tasks. So that's a very big deal, especially because this is compared to Claude, which costs like $100 for the unlimited version. And you get this completely, completely for free. Now, in my opinion, I mostly like to use IDEs and user interface which Gemini Code Assist actually can do. So if you're not really a fan of terminals, I would highly suggest that you go ahead with Code Assist. Again, video is down below in the description. If you see that this solution, the Gemini CLI is not for you, just click there and you are going to find an amazing and very, very much improved Gemini Code Assist. They improve it like every single week with new updates and it becomes better and better. So let's waste any more time. It's about time that we get started to try this out. So Gemini CLI is already so famous on GitHub, like it's taking the world by a storm. 35,000 stars on GitHub. This is insane. So let's get started. The first thing is we need to have Node.js version 18 or higher. So if you go here, you click this link, it will open up the Node.js website. You want to select your uh, like uh, operating system. You've got Windows, Mac OS, Linux, pretty much everywhere. You can use Docker and npm to do the installation. You can select the version here and there are various options in all honesty. So it's all up to you how you want to set this up. So I think it's time to, you know, give it a try and get started. Also, you can use pre-built Node.js for Windows. So this is something that I like because it's a lot simpler to set up. So after you install Node.js, you want to give a check. So what you want to do is type node v on your terminal to see the version that you've got. You also want to do npm v to also check if you have npm installed. Okay, so that's the prerequisite. That's what you want to check after the installation happens. Again, for Windows, I would highly suggest that you go with a pre-built Node.js installer. Like it's a lot simpler. You won't have to like get Docker or whatever. So to install the Gemini CLI, you've got to run this command. So it's npm install g google gemini cli you write this on your terminal and it will start to download the gemini cli that's simple here you can also see the gemini code assist which supposedly is now paired with gemini cli that's nice to see 
So we're waiting for the installation to happen. While we wait for it, I just want to inform you that I have an AI course hosted on Udemy. It's very, very cheap and you only pay once and every single week I publish updates and new tutorials, new things for you to learn new tools. You can learn coding, doing research, creating chat messages, generating images, videos, automations, coding, there are so many things in this course, like I think it's 24 hours of content already and it's getting updated every single week. So I think it's a very good deal in the market of courses. So boom, we've got it installed and what we have to do is then type Gemini. So make sure to create a new like folder where Gemini will be used inside. So type Gemini and boom, the first option is to select the theme so you can browse the themes here and i would go with a google code okay we hit the enter button and then you want to select how you are going to log in you can use a gemini api from google ai studio a vertex ai a link from the cloud services or you can log in with google so i hit you know login with google just hit enter super simple you sign in with your google account again make sure to understand that in this case when you use the free version okay when you use the free version google is going to train on your data so if you are a business or if you use this for a business and it's sensitive you might want to use the paid version so you might want to buy your own api key and put that in so Tips for getting started. Ask questions, edit files, run commands. Be specific for the best results. Create a Gemini.md files to customize your interactions with Gemini and slash help for more information. So if you hit here slash, you are going to see various things that you can use. So there are various options right now. You can manage the memory. You can see external editor preferences, etc., etc. I really don't want to go into details about these things. I think the best thing we can do right now is to try this out. So we are going to be using Gemini 2.5 Pro. We have 100% of context left. So we're going to do a very simple test because already this video is quite long and I don't want to bore you. I want you to go hands on and try this out. This is my first time trying it out. So maybe the result is not the one we expect. So I'm going to create a transformer teaching web page. I'm getting this, I'm pasting it in and hit enter. So let's see what Gemini 2.5 Pro can do, what Google CLI can do. Again, this is the worst it's going to be. It's a very new release. All of the CLIs in the past, in the first few days, had loads of problems. You've got to understand this. This is not 100% the final version. You can understand that Gemini is going to improve so much by getting all of this training data and all of this experience. I think this is a very big step for Google, especially when they couple it with their chat mode which is the gemini code assist so you know i think google has started to improve so much and i think they're going to be the number one ai company by the end of 2025 by a mile and there are so many reasons to tell you that but it's not the time to explain exactly why that is what I want you to understand is that this is a super important opportunity for you. You are, you, are, you are the earliest people that will be using this. You can get ahead of the competition. So the time is now for you to start learning these things. You don't have to become an expert. You have already a head start. Start using them, get acquainted with them, keep up with them, do the updates, try things out, try to connect NCPs, try to create your own Gemini.md, etc., etc. guys. It's so important, guys, to do these things, okay? It's so important. So it's refining the file paths. And here it says, my apologies, I need to use absolute paths. I will now create the index.html file in the correct directory. So apply this change. Yes, apply this change. You can also modify it with an external editor. So let's apply this change and it created the index.html as we can see over here in the correct directory. That's nice to see. So now it will create the style CSS. You can see how fast it is. Press Ctrl S to show more lines. So you could preview this by clicking Ctrl S. That's what we do here. 
So, yep, we could also modify with an external editor. We can select, like, for example, VS Code. It shows also the ones you have installed on your computer. So, if you click that, modify with external editor, click open, and you can see exactly the code and you can customize it before everything. So, then what you want to do is just close this window, click Yes Allow, and boom, it created the style CSS. That's a very nice procedure. I'm quite happy with that, with what I'm seeing. We also have loads of context for Gemini 2.5 Pro. And here is the script JS, super nice. Let's allow and let's see the result. Again, this is not by any means an amazing benchmark. This is by no means like something insane for this model to do, okay? But for us right now, it's just about exploring this and seeing what it can do. So this is the web page. Let's start learning the character overview, practical use cases, and this dropdown. You can also use this toggle button for white mode or black mode. That's nice. Okay, so let's type another message. Please make the website look geeky. Okay, so we're going to ask it to make the site look more geeky. Let's see if it can actually take the context, edit it correctly, and let's see if the result will be better. But already we can see that it's working. I see no bugs, no errors. In just 10 minutes, we went from nothing to a website. In just 10 minutes, fully set it up. Yes, let's allow this change. And we can see that we already start to eat up the Gemini 2.5 Pro context. But there is so much context left because this model can actually get 1 million of input context. It's insane. And you can see it goes step by step, small, focused changes in each of the files. It takes also a little bit of time. In all honesty, it's not a very fast model. If you use the full context, it's going to go to Flash. After Flash, I don't know if it's going to go to Flashlight. Hopefully it doesn't, and it gives you loads of usage for the Flash model. So let's see, it's adapting the Tailwind CSS. But we have no Tailwind, we just have CSS. Oh my God, it's going to make an error. So I see. It seems I made an error in the number of expected replacements. I will correct that and proceed with the updates. I'm quite sure it's going to create a huge mess because what we use, I think it's not Tailwing CSS. Is this Tailwing CSS? Maybe it is, I have no idea. Let's see, let's see if it can actually bring us a nice response. Okay, so it created some other changes. Let's allow for once and it's going to start doing the changes. It will update the style CSS to add scan lines effect and other geeky stylings. Okay, let's go again. Let's see the changes. All right, loads of, loads of stuff going over here. So let's hit allow and let me close that window. So SEO page, for some reason it's crawling up on its own. Let's accept these changes as well. I have no idea what changes it does. Okay, you can now open on your browser. Okay, so let's open it up on our browser. Oh, and it actually made it look super good. It's exactly geeky. This is exactly what you could expect from someone that is like a programmer. The dropdowns are no longer working. This white mode is no longer working, but it's fine. I really like the styling. I think this is quite awesome. So how about we do clear? We clear everything. Let me delete all of these things. I want to try one more thing. So let's delete all of that. And I want to go ahead and try and create this Flappy Bird P5.js game that we usually, that we usually, usually create. So let's paste it here, hit enter, and let's see. Is it going to create a nice game? Considering game architecture, I really love these previews. Uh, you know, they keep you like focused and you see the changes it's doing. You get a little bit of an understanding of what the model is trying to do or what part of the process it is on. And again, we have 100% of context left. So it tells us how much context our current code base is using out of the Gemini model. That's nice to see. Let's see, let's see. Okay, so it gives us also an HTML file, which I really don't want. I just wanted the JS file, but still it's fine. Let's try and see the game on our browser. So this is the game and the game doesn't look half bad. It's actually, 
a game and I died because it's super hard. Okay, okay, let's see. Can we pass this? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Game looks nice. Gotta say, game looks nice. Okay, so let's type another message. Make the game assets more beautiful. More beautiful. Replace the player with an airplane. The pipes should be less hard to pass and be like nukes. And let's see if it can actually do these changes. Let's see if it can edit the game to make everything look better. It read the script JS file and yeah, it understood what we want to do. So let's see if it can actually do this edit. But from what I'm seeing right now, it seems like a very nice process. I really love how Google is also focusing on making everything look nice, make you, making you, you know, engaged with the AI as it works. And what we can see lately from AI is that they take more time to respond, they can do harder tasks, and in general, their failures are so, so rare. Maybe you don't get exactly what you want, but the model is still going to bring you a very good answer. It's not going to output wrong code. Okay, so it updated the game and the assets. So let's try this out. So we've got something like an airplane, in all honesty. The obstacles look a little better, but they're not nukes. I also like how it made the difficulty of the game a little bit easier and I died. This is nice. This is super nice. I gotta say, this is a very good result. So, my opinion for Gemini Google CLI is that for simple tasks, at least what I tried, it's very, very good. And I really love the flow and the process, the easiness of setup. And I would like to hear your own opinions about the Gemini CLI. I think Google is in correct direction. Offering these free limits will allow them to improve their Gemini model, with Gemini 3 being probably one of the best models for quite a while. I think it's going to be insane. And also the competition has to throw the prices down. That's what I love about Google, is that they offer so many things for free while getting training data and improving their models faster than the competition. And also the competition has to lower the prices because Gemini models are both good and free. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye.